sometimes I want an applications processor. Maybe I've got a touch screen that needs to run some whizzy graphics UI. I need to run an operating system. I want memory management, you know, applications processor stuff. But other times I need an MCU. I want real-time control, hardware interfaces, all that down in the bits and clock cycles capability that lets me spin motors or open doors or whatever. <laughs> but what if I want to spin my motor or open my door with a WYSI graphics UI? Hmm? What then? Well, I'm gonna need a best-of-both-worlds kind of processor that lets me eat my real-time performance and have it too. Wait, that doesn't quite work. <laughs> let's just say I need something that has the best of both applications processors and microcontrollers. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode, I'm talking to Mario Centeno and Gauri Chindalor from NXP about a new type of processor that brings the features of applications, processors, and microcontrollers to the table. It's pretty cool. Let's check it out. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about crossover processors from NXP. Welcome, Mario and Gowry. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Amelia. Nice to meet you. Hi, Amelia. Nice to meet you, too. So we're here to talk about crossovers. And, well, I kind of thought that was a type of car, but you guys do processors, right? So help me out here. Yeah, we are still in the semiconductor industry. We haven't become the car manufacturers yet. But that is where the term came from. The crossover came from the automobile industry. So the automobile industry came up with this crossover passenger vehicle. They were actually built using the sedan chassis, but they had the utilitarian aspects of a truck and a minivan. So essentially what they did was they brought the best of both worlds and making these crossover SUVs really popular as you can see today. So what we have done here is take that same concept and apply it to embedded processors to create crossover processors. Okay, now I am intrigued. Tell me some more details about this. Well, if you look at things all around us, you'll see embedded processors everywhere. Today, typically they're classified either as a MCUs, microcontrollers, that's the short form for it, and applications processors. MCUs are typically formed in what we call as edge devices in the Internet of Things. Devices like door locks, coffee machines, motor control in fans, washing machines, everything around us. These are very purpose-built to serve a specific task or they do a small set of tasks in the device and they do it very effectively. The apps processor, on the other hand, are typically used in devices that need higher computational capability. Think of the devices like voice-activated speakers that we are all used to at home, like Amazon or Google and then modern smart home devices like user-friendly smart thermostats we use at home, streaming sound systems, and so on. So basically, MCUs are used on the lower end, and apps processors are used when advanced graphics and complex computation is required. Cool. I have had this challenge myself where I wanted some of the capabilities of an MCU and wanted some of the capabilities of an apps processor, and I struggled with that decision. Uh, you're absolutely right. You're not alone in this struggle. As we talk to more and more customers, they're also seeing a similar problem. What we are seeing is that MCUs are becoming increasingly more capable and they're getting into the space what used to be traditionally apps processor space. On the other hand, apps processors are going to lower cost regime and get into the higher end MCU application space. So basically, what you're seeing is the traditional MCUs and the apps processors are on a collision path, kind of like two spiral galaxies colliding to create an elliptical galaxy. In this collision zone, what matters is the attributes like the performance, graphics capability, security, and equally important, it's the versatility of the applications that they can go into. Okay, galaxies colliding, that's awesome. Bring on the collision. Uh, do I need to wear special glasses or something? No, you don't need special glasses, maybe a helmet. But honestly, what we have done here is that we have accelerated the collapsing boundary between the apps processors and the MCUs. We introduced a new class of embedded processors we call crossover embedded processors. If you think back to the crossover SUVs, just like how they combined the best from the sedans and the best from the trucks and the minivans, what we have done 
with these crossover embedded processors is bring the best attributes from the MCUs and from the apps processors. From the MCUs, we brought in the ease of use and real-time operations. And from the apps processors, we brought in the performance integration and the rich user experience. All right, let's dive into some details here. How does this give me the best of both worlds that you described? Well, the signature of the apps processors is typically the high performance. In our world, and in fact, for more than 60% of the embedded market, apps processors are ARM Cortex A based. Okay. With today's process and technology and optimization, they can run anywhere from 600 megahertz to, let's say, 2 gigahertz even plus. Okay. Of course, being a Cortex A based, they don't lend easily for real time deterministic operation, and instead, they use higher level languages like Linux, Android, and other higher level operating systems. Right. MCUs, on the other hand, are typically powered by Cortex M cores and they top out at around 400 megahertz today. That's the best MCU that you can buy today. And most traditional MCUs that you're used to have some sort of a non-volatile memory on chip, either in the form of a doubly prom or as a flash. Right. And they're also real-time operation. In, in other words, they're deterministic in execution. By real-time, what we mean is that the ARM core responds to any inputs coming from outside. And this kind of an immediate response may be very important in a lot of the edge devices like the Internet of Things. Sure. And that's why... MCUs typically use lower level operating systems like RTOS, which allow embedded developers to have more direct control over the core. What we have done with the crossover processors is bring together this high performance from the apps processor and real time responsiveness from the MCUs. Okay, that sounds great. So can we meet some of these new crossover processors then? Absolutely. We call this new crossover processors as I.MX RT. The name comes from the combination of I.MX because it is built from our popular I.MX application processors. We use that chassis and the RT stands for real time. So the name I.MX RT captures the crossover nature of this product family, application processor that runs real time operating system. Our I.MX RT processors start at 600 megahertz. If you recall, the best MCU that you can buy today is around 400 megahertz. Right. So this one starts at 600 megahertz. That's around 50% higher performance than the best MCU that's out there. And because it's a ARM Cortex M based, it's a very deterministic and it's got a very low latency in the order of around 20 nanoseconds. Nice. And the bonus is it uses very easy to use tools. Our traditional MCU customers can continue to use the existing tools and don't have to invest large amount of money in learning the higher level languages. But that's not all. The most important thing is the price point for a lot of our customers. And these crossover processors cost less than half of what the high performing MCUs that you can buy today. But you get the performance that's typically expected out of the apps processor. And we have something for even the apps processors at that point. If you are used to using apps processors, you get the same performance that you are normally used to, but at a much lower price point. All right, my bomb is going to be happy to hear about that low price. So let's jump into some details. How is this built? Did you guys start with an MCU or an apps processor? That's a very good question. To build these RT processors, we started off with the applications processor chassis. It's just like how crossover SUVs started off with the car chassis. That forms your backbone. That's your basis. Here, we started with our most versatile chassis we have from the successful i.MX6 apps processor lineup. In particular, we use the i.MX6 ULL chassis because it's got the right amount of integration and it's appropriate for a crossover. As you can see, it's got a rich set of capabilities starting with graphics, display and camera interfaces, and a whole suite of wired connectivity options like UART, USB, SPI, etc. And it also has support for external memories like NAND and NAR, but also support for LPDDR because it's an apps processor. So we started off with this versatile platform and then we did some surgery to remove and replace specific blocks to make them into RT crossover. And what were the results of the surgery? Did the patient survive? Yeah, sure, it did. You can immediately notice that most of the blocks remained the same and that is exactly right because we kept the best of apps processors as is. The biggest change, of course, is replacing the heart of this processor from Cortex-A with a Cortex-M7 core. That's where it gets its real-time capability. Then we did some more surgery to make it look more like an MCU. For example, we took out the support for LPDDR because it's not needed for most of the MCU type of applications. But we added in the on-the-fly decryption capability to enable fast decryption of the data that's coming in from an external memory. And we kept the power management nearly the same 
but because it has to function more like an MCU, we integrated a DC-DC converter. That's great because you and our other customers don't have to buy an external PMIC. All power management is done internally, and because of integrated DC-DC, the active power can be reduced dramatically. Notice the one big difference compared to traditional MCUs. There is no embedded flash. Instead, we provided a large on-chip SRAM that can be configured as TCM. So for most of the typical applications, the entire code can be brought into the chip and be stored on the cache and executed from there without losing any performance. In rare situations, it needs to fetch the application code or get data from the external flash. We do have support for fast SPI interfaces like Quad and Octal. Essentially, by eliminating the embedded flash memory, what we have done is push the price point to very low compared to traditional MCUs, or apps processes for that matter. So, here we have a very cost-effective crossover processor, IDATMX RT. Okay, great. Now let's bring in Mario. Mario, let's talk about some specific products, some of these crossover processors now. Great. Okay. So the first family within the IDATMX RT series is the IDATMX RT 1050. And really, we had four pillars in mind when creating the industry's first crossover processor. First, we wanted high performance and real-time processing. By utilizing the i.mx6 ULL platform, we were able to push the performance to 600 megahertz. What this means is that it's 50% faster than any current M7 in the market. We achieve real-time processing by moving to the Cortex-M7 and adding 512K of memory that can be configured entirely as on-chip SRAM or tightly coupled memory. What this does, it allows for a fast response time and low latency. The second pillar we wanted was a high level of integration. The i.mx portfolio has a long history of multimedia, rich HMI experience, so we brought over the 2D graphics acceleration engine, parallel camera sensor interface, and LCD controller, as well as several audio interfaces for high performance audio. The last two pillars are all about enabling our customers by either lowering their bomb costs or having their software enablement environment that is easy to use. We have a DC to DC on board, which eliminates the need for a power management IC. For those customers coming from the application processor world, and the package that we use for the RT1050 is a 10x10 BGA package, which enables a four layer PCB, thus reducing further costs. For the software environment, we leverage many years of history that we have in our MCU portfolio with our Kinetis and LPC product line. And we utilize our MCU Expresso toolchain, which comes with an, with an IDE, a software development kit, and configuration tool. We also offer NXP's free RTOS, as well as support from the global ARM ecosystem. So let's talk about performance a little bit. How will that compare with the MCUs I'm used to? Yes, so Amelia, the i.mx RT1050 is the highest performing Cortex-M7 with real-time operation and application processor level of functionality. It delivers a core mark score of greater than 3000 with over 1200 DMIPS at 600 megahertz. This is more than 50% higher than any Cortex-M7 product in the market. It's more than 100% higher than any general Cortex-A application product in the market as well, and more than 250% faster than existing Cortex-M4 products today. This graph illustrates the performance of the i.mx RT1050 versus its competitors in terms of core mark score per dollar, making the i.mx RT1050 three to five times better than any competitor in the market today. Impressive. All right. Now let's talk about features. What's the feature set like? Four-wheel drive, leather seats, cup holders? Not quite, but we do offer a lot of flexibility. As we mentioned before, the i.mx RT1050 is the first Cortex-M7 in the i.mx portfolio. But not only that, it's the highest performing Cortex-M7 with a performance of 600 megahertz. We have 512 kilobytes of SRAM, which can be configured as on-chip SRAM or tightly coupled memory. The i.mx RT1050 is available in a 198 map BGA package. It's offered in two different temperature ranges. One is industrial temperature of minus 40 to 105 and consumer temperature of 0 to 95 C. We offer great design flexibility with extensive external memory interfaces that include NAND flash, quad spy NOR flash interfaces, parallel NOR flash interfaces, as well as EMCC and SDRAM interfaces. We also have a comprehensive multimedia platform integrated into this Cortex-M7 platform. This allows you to design advanced GUIs and enhance HMIs. What I'm talking about here is the 2D graphics acceleration engine, the parallel camera sensor interface, the LCD display controller, 
as well as the audio interfaces. For system control, we have multiple quad timers and flex PWM that come from our Kinetis V product line. This allows you to design for motor control applications. On the security side, we enable AES-128 cryptography, high assurance boot, and on-the-fly decryption via the bus encryption engine that's enabled through the quad flash interface. All right, let's shift gears and discuss some of the applications for these new crossover processors. Where do you see people designing them in? So we're really excited about the traction and customer interactions that we're having with the RT1050. We see it supporting various amounts of applications. We see it in applications ranging from high-end audio systems like guitar pedal controllers, to consumer healthcare products, as well as home building automation products such as thermostats and IoT gateways. So these products, as you can see, require a high performance and rich HMI experience that the i.mx RT1050 delivers. The i.mx RT1050 also has a motor control IP from our MCU portfolio, which is suitable for industrial applications and end products such as 3D printers, thermal printers, and unmanned autonomous vehicles. So we see the iDynamics RT1050 truly enabling a wide spectrum of applications that have been traditionally served by MCUs and application processors. Wow, that's exciting and a lot to take in. Let's summarize what we've talked about quickly. So the i.mx RT series is the highest performing embedded processor based on the Cortex-M7 core. It provides real-time functionality and MCU usability at an affordable price. The RT1050 offers high performance, real-time processing, rich integration, and most importantly, easy to use and low bill of material costs. We are really excited to leverage the years of history we have in our MCU portfolio, coming from our Kinetis and LPC products in combination with our i.mx application processor portfolio. And more importantly, we're excited to see the various applications and products that come to market with the industry's first crossover processor. That's great. I think I'll click that link to check out those crossover processors myself. Thank you, Gowrie and Mario, for joining me today. It was a pleasure speaking with both of you. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out even more information about crossover processors from NXP. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.